Hi guys, welcome to Comfort Life channel. I am so happy to see you here today and I hope you're doing great. In this video, I am going to discuss a very important topic. I believe it has to be important for everybody who wants to be healthy. We need to remember that gut health is not only important for our proper digestion, it's also very important for our immune system, for us to feel healthy and even happy. So in this video, I want to discuss in particular the symptoms that might indicate that your gut bacteria is out of whack. And if you have one of these symptoms, you definitely need to start working on your gut health immediately. And gut health is not something that happens overnight. It's your lifestyle goal. This is something you need to do on a daily basis. So to begin with, our gut bacteria are not created equal. There is good and bad bacteria in our guts and they're certified all the time. And we do need to make sure that there is a proper balance, that the bad bacteria is always defeated. And we really need to encourage the good bacteria to grow. It might not be really hard, but it does take several steps to achieve it. Well, let's talk about the symptoms now. The first symptom and probably the most obvious one is the digestive problems. It might include anything from bloating to constipation. Of course, we should um, absolutely indicate diarrhea, gas, heartburn or acid reflux also IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome and the disease, bit of the colitis and Crohn's disease. All these diseases definitely indicate that you do have problems with your gut bacteria, with your gut health. And pretty often um, when we go to the doctor, we are being prescribed various drugs, which could be anti-acids or anything else, you know, which is supposed to pretty much just mask the symptoms and make us feel better. They only address their surface level symptoms, but they don't really go to the root of the problem. That's something that needs to be healed. So the second um, group of symptoms might be surprising for you because it will mean some kind of mental problems, including depression, anxiety, brain fog, autism, and OCD, which is an obsessive compulsive disorder when a person, he or she, has the urge to do things repetitively, uncontrollable behavior or feelings that he or she feels and repeats over and over. Obviously, all these diseases and problems, mental problems, they should be controlled by a doctor. But no matter what the doctor prescribes you, he probably won't really think about your unhealthy gut problem. So now you know that you need to, to look at that really closely and try to maintain a proper gut health. But believe it or not, the scientists proved that your gut affects the health of your brain. The next group of symptoms uh, would indicate different mineral and vitamin deficiencies. Sometimes a person might say, I have a perfect diet, a very healthy diet. I eat pretty much everything that's supposed to provide me with every vital vitamin or mineral. But when the blood work shows that there are like deficiencies, a person is really puzzled. The answer to the surprise is the unbalanced gut health. Because when your gut health is not working properly, it's not really, the good bacteria is not thriving in your gut. It means that it prevents the proper absorption of vitamins and minerals because they do get absorbed in the gut. So if you do know that you're deficient in vitamin D, in vitamin K, B12, 7 and magnesium, it definitely might indicate that you do need to take care of your gut health. So the next group of symptoms is not really a symptom, it's just you using antibiotics and drugs. So I'm not going to uh, argue here that antibiotics, they're absolutely a miracle, like innovation of modern medicine and they do save lives. Unfortunately, sometimes they are prescribed for viral infections and it's been proven that it's useless to use antibiotics for that purpose. Pretty much people are dependent on different drugs like um, ibuprofen or Advil. I do understand that uh, sometimes you definitely need that pain relief, but some people they are relying on that pain relief almost on a daily basis for things like headaches or migraines. But again, just using the pill, okay, it relieves the, um, you know, the symptoms, you don't have a headache anymore, but you're not fixing the root of the problem because it might indicate more serious health diseases or the problems in your nerves, the problem in your spine, your neck, something that causes that migraine or headache. So it might be even the food. And that's a problem because it might it really caused further diseases, something that you could have prevented at that moment. Well, the reason for us to take antibiotics is then, you know, to wipe out the bad bacteria, anything bad. But the other side of the coin is that it also wipes out the good bacteria in your gut. And the bad news here is that if you don't really reestablish that good bacteria in your gut, it's not going to happen by itself. So every time it is strongly recommended that during or after taking an antibiotic, you do need to work really hard to make sure you introduce or reintroduce that good bacteria in your gut so it has an ability to grow, to thrive and make you healthy. Knowing the fact that good bacteria won't replace themselves, we come to the conclusion that people, you know, they have been taking um, antibiotics 
several times throughout their lives and they never ever thought about good bacteria which means that their gut health is in bad condition so if you do know that you had um, a course of antibiotics even a year ago you definitely need to take care of your gut health as soon as possible the next symptom will be your skin health well this is probably my favorite one because sometimes people think that the problem is you know lies in their skin the skin is too oily the skin is too sensitive the pores are not right or you know the skin reacts to this cream or that you know product this is true it's of course it's true but sometimes the problem lies in your gut so if you're suffering from acne eczema psoriasis and rosacea you do need to take care of your gut and of course don't stop doing whatever you're doing to treat your skin problem obviously or any medication that the doctor has prescribed you but you also need to try to make sure you have good bacteria thriving in your gut. I'm going to get to that just in a second. Next problem or symptom, which is not really a symptom I want to talk about, is the chronic stress. Most important, unmanaged stress. Well, we know we can't really avoid stress in our lives, in our everyday life, and that's fine, but we do need to find the way to relieve that stress. That's not only important for your gut health, that's important for your overall health and immune system. As you know, chronic stress might cause depression and anxiety, and it also raises your cortisol levels, and they in turn stop the gut from working properly. Sometimes people have been suffering from stress for years and they never address that problem. Well, you know, the stress situation is pretty much unique for every person because let's say you have stress from you know a, a person or a relative or a friend you do need to take an action you do need to think how you could avoid that stress maybe reduce the time you spent with that person maybe just stop talking to that person seeing him or her and always remember that anything that costs you your peace is too expensive Sometimes you might feel stress about your daily routine, so you do need to take action to try to change things or add some time just for yourself when you know that you took care of yourself and that's important. Another probably very common type of stress, and I have that too, is that when you're too hard on yourself and you are stressed because you don't do certain things you want to do. And as we know, our thoughts can fly very fast and in our head and in our mind, we can be able to do so many things and have so many ideas, but in reality, in our reality, we can not do that and sometimes we don't have time and we get stressed because we have that sort of baggage you know on our shoulders and we cannot get rid of it and it just piles and piles and piles causing stress so I am really working um, on that problem on a daily basis I try to be not too hard on myself and if I know that I could probably do three things I do one and I just try and I just try to be happy about this I try to really praise myself and say that hey that was a good outcome a good result and I think that's what everyone needs to do because if you're too hard on yourself it's not going to actually bring you anywhere it's just causing more trouble in the end. And the last, the seventh sign that you might have an unhealthy gut is the autoimmune disease, which, which, is, which means pretty much when the body is attacking itself. Uh, this is a very complicated topic, obviously. It's very hard to find the root of the disease, but it's very important for everyone who knows that he has any type of autoimmune disease. So if you're suffering from rheumatoid arthritis, irritable bowel disease, and Hashimoto's, you need to take care of your gut health. So now once we're done with the symptoms, I'm going to briefly say here how you could fix your gut health. I'm going to also um, make more videos about that topic because I am really passionate about it and I think to spread the word is very important here because people are neglecting their gut health. I mean, they just do. People live with these nasty symptoms like bloating and gas throughout their lives and they don't do anything with it. They just, you know, take a pill, the symptoms are relieved and you go ahead and just continue. Sometimes a person even knows that once he eats certain type of food, he will feel bad and bloated and have his time but we do continue to do that so it means that we actually are not you know we're not acting smart and, and sometimes when the bad bacteria defeats the good bacteria in our gut so it's the prior so it's the majority of it it actually causes nasty cravings like sugar and junk food believe it or not but it does that and if you do know that your gut health is very bad is in bad condition Reintroducing good bacteria, actually going on that path is a great idea, but it's not going to be easy because some people think that once they, you know, incorporate a lot of raw veggies and raw food, that it's still not going to happen overnight again. It's your lifestyle change. Besides, when your gut is not healthy and or not used to, you will not really be able to digest large amounts of raw food you have to start slowly besides once you eliminate sugar in your diet let's say you might have withdrawal symptoms you might have terrible headaches and even flu-like symptoms not right away but within a couple of days you do need to stay strong during this time and just you know be strong and keep going so the first thing obviously you can do is to avoid toxins toxic food well toxic by toxic food i think 
you should try the elimination diet by all means because it will definitely indicate what type of food you're not good with. You might do a blood work test where which might indicate which foods are causing sensitivity and which could and which food you might be allergic to. Then I would add eliminating grains, even at least from the beginning, eliminating any sugars, even artificial sweeteners, any junk food, of course, and unhealthy oils. So you start with that, and it's a huge step. It sounds like four easy things, just four easy you know, groups of food, but that's not. That's, that's really something you probably need to incorporate into your life slowly, every step at a time. Also, you need to reduce the amount of uh, pain relief medications that you are taking, unless it's prescribed by the doctor. Try to see why you're having this and that pain. If you could probably you know, try to find some alternative methods, like peppermint essential oil, let's say, if you want to treat your headache. Also, you need to uh, reduce the amount of pesticides you might be exposed to. Um, try to make sure that the air in your house is really clean and try to make sure that probably the dirty dozen and the clean 15 rule is in your life because you know the dirty dozen foods they are just full of pesticides which are really bad for us. The next group of veggies you do need to incorporate in your diet would be fermented foods. They are extremely healthy like sauerkraut, kimchi, lacto-fermented veggies and fruits, non-pasteurized yogurt, cheese and kefir is my favorite actually. Well, but these has to be introduced into your diet slowly, very slowly. Maybe just start with a tablespoon of sauerkraut and even a teaspoon a day and see how you're actually, how your body responds because you might develop um, gas and bloating. You don't want to do that. So slowly increasing the portion of these type of food, you will, re you will reach the amount of, you know, which is going to make you good, which is going to reintroduce the good bacteria in your guts. The next advice would be just to start taking a good quality probiotic supplement. Good quality is the keyword here because there are a lot of nasty things on the market which just cost a lot, but they don't really provide with anything good. I probably would list a couple of um, couple of um, brands or products. This is just I want to share with you. And uh, do make sure you are consuming them on a daily basis. Uh, pretty Probably you should start with a larger amount from the beginning or especially before traveling. And then you reduce you know, to the recommended dosage of probably one or two pills a day. You can also watch my videos where I talk about elimination diet I've mentioned earlier and also the how to take the probiotics, what is the best way to do it. And the last tip would be again to try to manage your stress as much as you can. Uh, we already discussed it and I have a couple of videos about that as well. I always talk about that because again, I think in our modern lives there's too much stress. I really hope guys this information was informative. I try to provide you with the key symptoms that might indicate that your gut health is not in good condition and I also try to give you really the steps and tips which you can start following today, tomorrow, not later than tomorrow, to improve your gut health. And always remember that it has to be your lifestyle change, but it will keep paying you off every single day you're doing it because you are taking care of yourself and everybody will benefit from it because if you're happy, people around you will be happy and I think that's very, very important for us. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your attention. I wish you guys to stay very happy, very healthy, be grateful and try to enjoy your life every single day. If you like this video, please put the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you later.